Hello, hi everyone. Assalamualaikum. My name is Wan Asha Nadirah binti Washrison Asma from class CS 1434B. My name is Husnul Huda binti Marwadi. And lastly, my name is Nur Amalia Aisha binti Ahmad Nizam. When we are in stationary car that moves rapidly to gain speed, we get pushed against our seat. And when brakes are applied, we get pushed ahead or when we take a sharp right turn, we are pushed towards the left. These are all situations where we are accelerating. We have all experienced this whether in a car or a bus or while riding motorbike. Simply put, when velocity changes, we have acceleration. So, what is acceleration? Just now, I mentioned that when velocity changes, there will be acceleration. Do you remember what is velocity? It is speed with direction and it is hence of vector quantity. Let's say, a body moves from rest and reach a velocity of 20 km an hour in 5 seconds. Will acceleration involve here? Yes, because the velocity is changing. It was zero initially, and at the end of 5 seconds, it is 20 km per hour. In other side, assume that a boy is cycling a bicycle at 30 km per hour. Then, he turn right at 30 km per hour, and continue moving at the same speed of 30 km per hour. Will there be acceleration in this case? Yes, of course. As the direction is changing, the velocity will also change. So, this was the most important concept you had to know about acceleration. Take note, the acceleration exists only when there is a change in velocity. But, how to calculate acceleration? Acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity. In terms of formula, acceleration can be written as change in velocity over the time taken. If the velocity of an object changes from an initial value of v to the final value of u in time t, then acceleration a can be written as v minus u over t. Now, we go for example question. A baseball is pitched at 40 meters per second in a league game. The batter hits the ball on a line drive straight towards a pitcher at 50 meters per second. Determine the acceleration of the ball if it was in contact with the bat at 0.03 seconds. Acceleration is the rate of changes of velocity with time. Since velocity is vector, this definition means acceleration is also a vector. When it comes to vector, directions matters as much as size. In a simple one-dimensional problem like this one, 
Direction are indicated by algebraic signs. Every quantity that points away from the better will be positive. Every quantity that points towards him will be negative. Thus, the ball comes in at negative 40 meter per second and goes out at 50 meter per second. If we didn't pay much attention to this detail, we will not get the right answer. To calculate, we just apply it in the formula that I have mentioned before. Next situation, a stone is thrown vertically upwards from the ground at the speed 40 meter per second. For question A, the question asks us to determine time taken for the stone to reach the ground. From this question, we should use the concept of free fall. What a free fall? Okay, let me tell you. A free falling object is an object that is falling under the sole influence of gravity. Any object that is bent at you point only by the force of gravity is said to be in the state of free fall. Firstly, the initial velocity of the stone is given by u equal to 40 meter per second. The gravity as we know is 9.81 meter per second square. To find the time t for the stone to reach the ground, we need to apply the formula as shown which is displacement equal to inhale velocity multiplied with the time minus to half gravity multiplied with time squared we assume that the displacement is zero then we substitute the inhale velocity and gravity value in their formula by doing the calculation we obtain that the time for the stone to reach the ground is 8.60 second 8.16 second it is impossible that the time taken reach to the ground is zero right next question b find the velocity of the stone when it reach the ground since we have the time for the stone to reach the ground, we just need to apply the formula given. Final velocity, as we know as V, equal to the inhale velocity minus to gravity multiplied with the time. Then, substitute all the value that we have obtained so the final velocity is negative 39.65 meter per second the negative sign indicates that the stone is in the downwards direction okay now jelas bye Lastly, I will talk about projectile motion or also can be called as motion in two-dimensional. Earlier, we have listened about acceleration from Huda and free fall motion from Aisha. Both of them are in a straight line motion but in different direction. How about if an object experiences moving along horizontally but at the same time vertically? This kind of motion is called projectile motion. In this session, I will talk about the concept of the projectile motion. 
Let's say Ahmad is a swimmer. He's trying to jump off the springboard diving by running off of it and wants to get as far as he can into the pool. The board is 10 meters high. He's running with a speed of 8 meters per second. I want to know how far he could get or his distance from the board to where he dive. Firstly, we need to separate Ahmad's motion into vertical and horizontal components. Whenever something is thrown up into the air at whatever angle, we know that whatever is going on vertically with its speed and acceleration is going to be completely independent of whatever is going on horizontally. Let's say Ahmad accidentally trips here at the edge of the board. He will fall down the board so he will land right here. That's actually going to take him the same amount of time. Therefore, no matter how fast he is going, he will always going to take the same amount of time to get down into the pool. Let's write down what's going on vertically. I learned this on a YouTube channel where we can write down it as Suvet. So, the springboard is 10 meters high. We can write down his displacement as vertically is 10 meters. Do we know anything else about Ahmad's movement vertically? Well, there is. We must know that whenever something is going horizontally or starts falling, we know that its initial velocity u is 0 meters per second. Whenever something is going horizontally of an edge, we can always say that its initial vertical velocity is going to be zero. We don't know V, so we will skip for that. For acceleration, he's falling under gravity, so we know that A is going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. And lastly, we need to find time. As we write down all the clues, we can use the equation of S equals ut plus half at squared. So we know that u is 0, then we can get rid of ut here. We need to rearrange the equation to find t. So 2s equals at squared. 2s divide a equals t squared. So t is equals to square root of 2s divide a. We can insert all the clues into the equation and we will get t equals to square root of 2 times 10 over 9.8 and then we will get t is equal to 1.43 seconds. So now that we know how long it takes for Ahmad to get into the pool, we can actually use this time which links the vertical and horizontal components together. So I'm going to carry this time over to my horizontal calculations. We act like there is no air resistance. If there is no air resistance, then that means there's no forces acting horizontally on Ahmad. The only force acting on him is his weight, pulling him downwards. Therefore, we can say speed is constant and that means the acceleration is going to be zero. So actually that means there is no need for Suvet. We know the speed is constant. We can just say that speed equals distance over time. Therefore, the distance is speed times time. So D is equals to 8 times 1.43 and D is equals to 11.44 meters. Therefore, we can say that the distance of Ahmad from the board to where he dived is 11.44 meters. That's how we do projectile motion.